The Naughtiest Unicorn by Pitt Third. Series brought to you by courtesy of Mr. Darrenster. Chapter One Magic Monday. It was Monday morning and Myra Desai was very excited. This was no ordinary Monday morning. This Monday morning was the first day of the holidays. And it was Myra's first day at a new school. Because this was no ordinary school. This was Unicorn School. Myra had been desperate to go to Unicorn School since her sister Rani started going two summers ago. Rani wouldn't stop going on about how wonderful her unicorn Angelica was. She kept saying how amazing she was at all the magical quests and she all and she was always making whinnying noises in Myra's ears to make her jealous and she brought home about a hundred unicorn school quest medals which had their own special shelf in the living room. Rani said that the quests go on for days and days and were super exciting. And the time Rani spent at unicorn school did seem like ages ago to Myra. But time passed differently at unicorn school and Rani was really only ever gone a day in normal time. Myra had dreamed of her own unicorn, having her own unicorn since forever. She practiced plating the, na the manes, but plating the manes of all her toy horses, persuaded her dad to let her groom his beard, and even tried attaching a horn to their cat pickles. He wasn't very pleased. No, uh, I can't say that he would be. It was a bit of a mystery who was selected to go to Unicorn School and who wasn't. Lots of people from Myra's family had gone to Unicorn School, including Myra's mum. So Myra hoped more than anything that she would get to go too. Myra always tried to live her life as open to magic as possible. She wished on stars. She believed in fairies. She said hello to black cats who crossed her path. And then one incredible day, Myra woke up with a sparkly envelope on her pillow. Myra remembered it as if it was yesterday. It was actually last Thursday. She screamed so loudly that Pickles flung himself off Myra's bed into a pile of dirty clothes and Myra's dad came running in to check what was wrong. But there was nothing wrong. Everything was finally right. Her hands shaking with excitement, Myra opened the letter. Dear Myra Desai, we are delighted to invite you to join us at Unicorn School. You will be in class red. Please use the magic portal to access the school. We look forward to seeing you soon. Yours sincerely, Madame Shetland. Dad! Myra yelled and started jumping on the bed. I'm going to Unicorn School! Terrified. Pickles jumped onto Myra's dad's face and wouldn't let go of his beard. He said cheerfully. He gave My Myra a grin, a thumbs up, before leaving the room and walking into the wall. Myra reached inside the envelope and pulled out a leaflet containing all the information about the school, including a map and the school rules. 
Myra thought she might faint with delight. Unicorn school was going to be brilliant. For one thing, Myra couldn't wait to bring home her own medals. She'd already started making a space for them on the shelf and had accidentally knocked a couple of Rami's medals into Pickles' bowl. But the thing Myra was most excited about was getting to meet her unicorn. Her sister said that the unicorns were specially chosen for each person for specific magical reasons. You would get to spend all day every day with your unicorn, going to lessons, working on projects, and going on quests. Basically, your unicorn would be your best friend. Myra did have a best friend already at normal school, Katie with a K but she could definitely squeeze another one into her life. She spent a lot of time thinking about her dream unicorn, best friend, Princess Delilah Sparklehood. That sounds like a My Little Pony name. <laughs> <laughs> she filled a whole notebook with drawings of her and made a list of all the brilliant things they would do together. 1. Have amazing magical adventures. 2. Be great at quests. 3. Get loads of medals. Before heading to the magic portal that would take them to the unicorn school, Myra's mum took them to the supermarket. Myra and Rani needed to get treats for their unicorn and mum needed to buy donuts for someone's birthday at work. Myra was wondering what treats unicorns like. Magic beans? Glitter clouds? Rainbow juice? Which aisle do you think... Which aisle do you go to for magic treats? She thought to herself. But when she asked her sister Rami, rolled her eyes and said, Unicorns like carrots, obviously. And so they all headed over to the vegetable aisle. When they bought their carrots, they went back to the car. Rani also had some hay left over from last term, and Mum thought it would be nice if she shared it with Myra. The magic portal was in the car park by the leisure centre. Myra had never actually seen it. The portal could only be seen by current unicorn school pupils. Even Myra's mum couldn't see it anymore, since she had left the unicorn school. Roughly around, no, not roughly a thousand years ago. <coughs> what? <laughs> Usually, when they dropped her off, Rani got out round the corner so that she wouldn't be seen with them. But today, Myra would be going with her, and she would be one step closer to meeting her unicorn. There had been quite a bit of traffic on, traffic on the way, and Mum was running late for work. It's okay, Mum, said Rani. I'll take Myra through. Mum looked from one sister to the other, and then at her watch. Fine, she said. And then she fixed Rani with a look. Make sure you take care of your little sister on her first day. Mum handed them their bags, their treat bags, gave them both a hug, and jumped back in the car. Rani had already started stomping off when Mum rolled down her window. She leaned out with her phone in hand. Girls, let me take a picture 
your Earth Day at Unicorn School together. Rani turned, tutted, and folded her arms. Mum, are you crying? That's so embarrassing. Mum sniffed. It brings back such amazing memories of my first day at Unicorn School. Oh, happy time. Their mum stared off into the distance for a moment. Before she smiled again and blew her nose. Now smile, girls. Rani rolled her eyes. Myra smiled and gave two thumbs up as Mum's phone camera clicked. Love you girls, have fun. Mum drove off, waving one hand at them out of the window as she left the car park. Myra felt a bit nervous. Where's the magic portal? She asked Rani. Over here, has, said her sister. Come on. Rani stopped by the wheelie bins in the corner of the car park. So you have to get in the bin, spin round three times and then jump out and scream and then you'll be at uniform school, she said. Myra looked at the bin. Are you sure? she said. Uh, which one of us has the medal for being the best at the magic portal? said her sister. Okay, said Myra. Myra clambered into the bin and held her breath. This was so exciting. Also, it really sank. In just a few seconds, she'd be in unicorn school. Chapter 2 Through the Portal Myra leapt out of the bin, yelling at the top of her voice, Ah! came the reply as she collided with someone. Myra looked down to see a boy on the ground staring up at her with wide eyes. Behind him was a man cowering by a bike rack. Oh, hello, said Myra as she helped the boy up. Sorry about that. The boy stared at her warily. So this is Unicorn School, she said, looking around. To be honest, it didn't look very different to the leisure centre car park. Uh, no, said the man, by the bike racks. Myra supposed he must be the boy's dad, because they looked quite alike and had matching briefcases. So is this is where you go through the magic portal to get to the school? Raheem is just just about to go through. That's it. This is this is where you go through the magic portal to get to the school. Raheem is just about to go through. He gestured at the boy and he gulped. But said Myra, as she looked for her sister, who was nowhere to be seen. And then she realized Rani had tricked her and gone through on her own. Typical. We can show you if you like, said Raheem's dad. It's Raheem's birthday. We've had 12 practice runs just to be safe. He squeezed Raheem's shoulder. Do, do you live in that bin? Squeaked Raheem. No, I was just... Resting before I went through the portal, said Myra. It's my first day too. I'm Myra. It would be brilliant if you could show me. She followed the two of them past the bin and to a little clump of bushes at the edge of the car park. Raheem and his dad showed her a gap in the branches where the air looked kind of wobbly and shimmery magic, thought Myra. Her tummy gave a little lurch. This was really it. Myra waited for Raheem to say bye to say bye to his dad. It took a while because they checked Raheem's briefcase twice and then sang a song about 
the ten rules of keeping safe. But finally, Myra and Raheem crawled through the gap in the bushes and into a clearing. Everything looked just a little bit sparkly. Okay, breathed Myra. Ready? <laughs> said Raheem. Myra decided to take that as a yes. She grabbed his arm with one hand and reached out towards the sparkles. There was a flash of light that split into seven color into the seven colours of the rainbow. Myra felt herself being lifted up and before she knew it, they were hurtling through the air. Myra's toes tingled in a giggly feeling, tickled up her legs and into her tummy and arms and head. Even her hair felt excited. Everything was already so magical. She could hardly stand it. She was on her way to unicorn school. How fun this is! Myra yelled to Raheem, but he was too busy screaming to reply. Oh, sorry. How fun is, how fun is this? Myra yelled to Raheem, but he was too busy screaming to reply. Just as quickly as it appeared, as it had appeared, the rainbow light vanished, and for a moment the two of them hung in the air before dropping with a thump onto a soft haystack. They climbed off the landing haystack. Just as the next children were deposited by the rainbow. Myra looked around and pulled her strands of hair out and pulled strands of hair out of her hair. In front of them was the unicorn school. It was huge. It had turrets and a clock tower and looked a bit like a castle, but lots of it was all one le- all on one level like a bungalow. Because unicorns don't like stairs. Myra thought there was nothing about unicorns that she didn't know. Rani had told Myra that the dormitories were, where, where the pupils slept at night time were up in the turrets and the unicorns slept by their stables. I slept in their stables. The stables were in a large cobbled yard in front of the school. On the other side of the yard were fields with jumps set up. Those must be where the riding lessons are, Myra thought. She had never been horse riding, but she had ridden a one-eared donkey at the beach last summer. She thought that unicorn riding must be easier than that, and there would be less chance of falling in the sea. Behind the school, Myra could see the forest and behind that enormous ice capped mountains. Rani said that the fearsome forest was where lots of the quest took place. It was huge, stretching as far as Myra could see. Myra's toes were still tingling. She turned to Raheem and Green and grinned. He he still looked a bit vomity from the journey. The rainbow had dropped them off to the side of the grand paddock, which seemed to be the school playground for humans and unicorns. Real, live, actual unicorns. Groups of older kids stood chatting, each with a unicorn next to them. It was not like it was no big deal. Myra realised her mouth was open in astonishment and quickly closed it. One group were playing football, but they were riding their unicorns and the unicorns were kicking the ball with their hoods. And over in a far corner of the field, some unicorns and their riders were leaping over the jumps. Myra thought they looked a bit like 
they were flying. Rani had told her that the unicorns developed magical powers as they got older and that some of them could fly. That excited feeling in Myra's chest got bigger and bigger until she felt like she might burst. The unicorns were still an, the unicorns were all amazing. Different colours with long legs, sleek glossy manes and glittery horns. It was amazing to think that soon Myra would meet her very own unicorn. Just then Myra heard a burst of laughter to her right. There was Rani and her friends. They were in the third year now. Class yellow. You started in class red, then moved up through the colours of the rainbow. And each year, you had another stripe added to your school badge. Myra looked at the badge on the sleeve of her t-shirt. What would it look like when she had a full rainbow? Well, just that, a rainbow. <laughs> Um, said Raheem, taking her out of her daydream. I think we go over there. Turning away from her sister, Myra followed Raheem over to a big banner near the stables that read, Welcome Uniscool, Unicorn, Welcome Unicorn School Class Red. Chapter 3 Unicorn Best Friend Forever The bell in the clock tower chimed and everyone gathered in their classes. Myra's class was the only one with just humans. Each of the other six class groups were made up with children and unicorns. Seven teachers filed out of the school. Each of them wore a different coloured rosette with their name on. A tall, dark-haired teacher stopped in front of Myra's class. She was wearing a red rosette which said, Miss Glitterhorn. Good morning, Class Red, said Miss Glitterhorn. Good morning, Miss Glitterhorn, chorus Class Red. Now, before we head into assembly to meet the unicorn, I thought that it would be nice if we got to know each other, trilled Miss Glitterhorn. Myra sighed. She was so impatient to meet her unicorn best friend. But she did like the idea of learning her classmates' names. After all, they would be her friends too. A girl at the front put her hand up. She had long curly hair and was in a wheelchair with rainbow wheels. Yes, Miss Glitterhorn beamed. Do you actually have a horn? No, I don't, said Miss Glitterhorn. She smiled. Now we'll play a getting to know you game where... The girl put her hand up again. Yes, said Miss Glitterhorn. Do you have unicorns in your family? No, I don't, said Miss Glitterhorn. She smiled again, although it was a bit smaller this time. So we... The girl put her hand up again. So is it a coincidence that you're called Miss Glitterhorn? Yes, said Miss Glitterhorn. Anyway... After 17 questions, Miss Glitterhorn decided that actually they would go straight to the assembly and they could get to know each other on the way. Myra and Raheem walked alongside the girl who had been asking all the questions. So told them her name was Darcy. Now she told them her name was Darcy and that she was going to be famous one day. Wow, said Raheem. How will you be famous? Darcy shrugged. Oh, win a TV talent show, probably. My dad says those shows are for people with no talent, said a boy walking next to them.
a fictional character agrees with me. <laughs> the, the boy walking next to him. His footsteps were really loud and Myra saw that he was wearing cowboy boots. He had a mop of dirty blonde hair and a smug mouth. Myra had heard him saying earlier how his parents were Olympic show jumpers and were making sure he was given the best unicorn. Darcy opened her mouth to reply, but they'd reached the hall and a stern-looking teacher gave her a warning look. Myra gasped when she saw the great hall, which was in the centre of the main school building. It was a beautiful indoor paddock, and the grass was sprinkled with wild flowers. At one end was a platform with a glittery... ...mounting block next to it. Around the sides of the hall was a gallery for people to sit in. The other six classes were already there with their unicorns, Miss Glitterhorn pointed to class red pointed class red to the front row. Myra felt a flutter of pride. Her sister would be there to see her get her unicorn. A hush descended on the hall, and a tiny woman walked across the paddock and onto the platform. Miss Glitterhorn joined her a moment later clutching an armful of scrolls and a clipboard. The first woman introduced herself. She was Madame Shetland, the head teacher. Madame Shetland cleared her throat and spoke into her microphone. Good morning, children and unicorns, and welcome to a new term at Unicorn School. And an extra special welcome to our new students. Class Red, who I trust has been busy learning the school rules in preparation, said the head teacher. Unicorn, Unicorn School is a place of fun, magic and adventure, but it is something to be taken seriously. The bond between child and unicorn is a noble tradition going back many centuries. Alongside your unicorn, you will learn and grow and to undertake quests and become the protectors of our land and shine a glittery light throughout the unicorn world. Myra felt a warm glow as she thought how she would definitely take it seriously and she would definitely follow all the rules as soon as she knew what they were. The head teacher smiled and gathered pupils. And of course, even not at, when not at Unicorn School, you will take forth the lessons learned here and promote the principles of friendship, kindness, bravery and tolerance. After everyone applauded Madame Shetland, it was finally time for the pairing of Class Red with their unicorns. Myra thought she might explode. Miss, Glitterhorn, Miss Glitterhorn handed the head teacher the clipboard. Jake De Quincey, said Madame Shetland. Shetland. <laughs> Sorry, that was a slip of the tongue, guys. Sorry. Myra saw a boy walking up to the platform. It was the one with blonde hair who was wearing cowboy boots. He was carrying his own riding hat with golden wings over the ears. Madame Shetland held the microphone towards Jake. If you could tell us about yourself, keep it brief. Jake leaned into the microphone. I'm Jake, and I'm going to be a champion unicorn show jumper, just like my mum and dad. Miss Glitterhorn handed Jake a scroll which he held up in front of him. The name of your unicorn will appear on the scroll, declared Madame Shetland. 
A class gasped as a project image of scroll appeared on the wall behind him. Jake and... There was a hushed silence. As they waited, the scroll shimmered and then a blurry word appeared. Everyone leaned forward to try and read it as the letters gradually became clear and sharp. Jake and Pegasus! There was a loud noise from the front of the hall as the double door swung open, making them all jump. Myra let out an excited squeal and Raheem nearly fell off his chair. Standing proudly in the doorway was a sparkling majestic unicorn. He was deep purple with a dark blue mane and a glittering golden horn. He strode towards the mountain block where Jake waited with his arms folded and his eyebrows arched confidently. Myra couldn't contain her excitement and gripped the hands of Raheem and Darcy until Darcy muttered to her to get off and Raheem looked really uncomfortable. Jake and Pegasus walked away from the platform to the other end of the hall and Myra felt slightly relieved that they wouldn't have to ride the unicorns in front of everyone. Darcy was next to be called. She wheeled up the ramp onto the platform. Madame Shetland held the microphone towards her and Darcy grabbed it. Well, what can I say? This moment means so much. I want to thank my mum. A speech is not necessary, Darcy interrupted Madame Shetland. Darcy's scroll appeared on the projection. Darcy and Star. A dramatic whinny came from the double doors and the class turned to look. A unicorn came strutting in. A silver coat shimmered and caught the light as she walked. She arrived next to Darcy, swished her mane and struck a pose. Darcy applauded in delight. They made their way over to Jake and Pegasus and started taking selfies until a teacher confiscated Darcy's phone. <laughs> Next was Seb. He said he loved art. He looked super excited to meet his unicorn firework who had a rainbow coloured mane. Then it was Raheem's turn. He stayed frozen to his seat when his name was called, so Myra gave him an encouraging shove to get him to his feet. Good luck, she whispered. He gulped and made his way to the platform. My name is Raheem, and I like books, he said carefully into the microphone. Raheem and... I bet he gets a really clever unicorn, thought Myra. It'll probably be able to read and everything. Raheem and Brave. <laughs> <laughs> A loud thundering sound could be heard from outside the hall and the floor seemed to shake. And then a blue shark, uh, a blue shape came galloping into the hall. The unicorn was a blur, racing around the hall before coming to a sudden stop in front of the platform with a stamp. Of his front hoof. He was midnight blue and the biggest, tallest unicorn they'd seen so far. Madame Shetland turned to Raheem, only to find he wasn't there, but she soon coaxed him out from behind the mountain block. Brave strutted over to the line of unicorns with Raheem, following at a careful distance. More and more children were called up. As each name was read out, Myra felt her heart leap into her throat and then sink back down again. Finally, she looked around and realised she was the only one in class red without a unicorn. And finally, we have Myra Death, began Madame Shetland. And then she jumped to see Myra already standing next to her. I'm Myra and I can't wait to meet my unicorn best friend. So 
said Myra into the microphone. She looked over at her sister in the crowd who gave a deliberate yawn. And I can't wait to win loads of medals, said Myra. Madame Shetland looked at her and raised one eyebrow. Miss Glitterhorn handed her the scroll. Myra's heart was hammering in her chest. Everyone in the crowd turned towards the double doors, but there was no sign of her unicorn yet. Myra looked back down at her scroll. She could see the word beginning to form. It wasn't long enough to be Princess Delilah, Sparkle, Sparklehood. But the first letter was a D. Dancer, Dasher, Destiny, Myra and Dave. As the price sort of gasp echoed around the hall, Myra peered closer at the scroll. It definitely said Dave. Again, the heads turned towards the door. Again, there was no unicorn. Madame Shetland looked over at Miss Glitterhorn. He said, just a sec, and jogged over to the double doors. She started clicking and waving at something outside, but whatever was being clicked and waved at didn't seem to want to come in. Eventually, Madame Shetland went over to help, and between them they pushed in the smallest, plumpest unicorn Myra had ever seen. He had his bottom planted firmly on the ground. and was making it as difficult as possible for the two teachers to move him. Myra stared. He had a little pot belly and a mane like straw that stuck up at odd angles. Greet your unicorn, dear, said Madame Shetland, giving a slightly forced smile. Miss Glitterhorn was leaning against the mounting block and sweating. Hi, Dave, said Myra. The unicorn looked up at her. Okay, so he was a bit small, and he wasn't very glittery, but at least I have a unicorn, she thought. Myra reached out to pat his nose, and Dave snorted loudly and put his ears back. She pulled her hand away. A round of applause for our final pair, Myra and Dave, said Madame Shetland. Uncertain claps rippled around the hall. Myra's sister was laughing so hard that she had to be taken outside. Myra looked back at her unicorn. There was a twinkle in Dave's eye. Myra felt encouraged. She smiled and waved at the crowd. Dave snorted again and lifted his tail. Then he unleashed a giant heap of poo onto Miss Glitterhorn's feet. Chapter 4 Dave's Donut it took Myra a while to get from assembly to her first lesson as they sat down again in the corridor and was refusing to move. But Rahim came to help her and together they half dragged, half pushed Dave down the hallway on his bottom and towards the classroom. Unicorn School was certainly full of surprises and challenges. Right now Dave was being quite a challenge but Myra was sure they would have a magical time as soon as they got to class. Miss Glitterhorn tutted when they finally arrived. She was standing in front of the whiteboard cleaning Dave's poo off her shoes with a wet wipe. As I was saying, class read, school rule number 19 is be on time every time. Myra gasped. The double desks were like normal desks on one side, but on the other... <coughs> That's me.
There was a taller unicorn size desk with a bag of hay hanging off it. Underneath each unicorn's desk was a basket containing grooming equipment. Raheem uh, scurried over to it at the desk, uh, to sit at the desk right, and the front, at the front where Brave was standing proudly. There was one empty double desk. Dave plodded towards it behind Myra and gave a snort. Then he finished off his entire hay bag in two bites. They'd made it. Myra gave a happy sigh as she sat down at her desk. Miss Glitterhorn finished running through the school rules. Myra definitely heard at last some of them. At least some of them. And stood up from behind her desk. Now you have your unicorn, she said. The lessons can begin. We will have two days of lessons when you will learn about all about your un- all about unicorn school and how we look after the land. But most importantly, you will bond with your unicorn so that on day three you will be ready to go on your first magical quest. The class oohed and aahed, and there was a buzz of excitement. Myra looked around the room and noticed that Jake and Pegasus were their neighbours. She gave Jake a friendly smile, but he was looking at Dave with a disgusted expression on his face. She turned and saw that Dave was gnawing at the corner of the desk. She hoped Miss Glitterhorn wouldn't notice. Right, said Miss Glitterhorn. Lesson one is getting to know your unicorn. You and your unicorn have a very special bond. You were chosen for each other by the purest kind of magic, friendship. But you've only just met, and you must earn your unicorn's trust. First, grooming. This is very relaxing for unicorns. Pick up your brushes and off you go. Myra picked up a soft brush. She'd read all about grooming. She reached out to put the brush on Dave's back and he ducked, avoiding her hand and sidestepped out of the way. Myra stepped closer to him and tried again, but he just did the same thing. Then she tried a different brush, but he sidestepped again. They kept doing this and shuffling further and further away from their desk until a girl called Tamsin put her hand up to say that they were making her unicorn feel uncomfortable. Myra dragged Dave back to their desk. She tried hiding the brush behind her back. She tried attaching it to a stick. She even tried brushing herself to show him how nice it was until Miss Glitterhorn came over to ask what she was doing. Then, hoping to put him in a better mood, Myra gave Dave the unicorn crown she'd made for him. Dave looked at the crown thoughtfully for a moment and then he ate it. Myra suddenly had a brilliant idea. Dave must be hungry. That's why he wasn't paying attention. Myra remembered Miss Glitterhorn saying, Treating is cheating. Unicorn Rule 54, you must not bribe your unicorn. Unicorn Rule, Unicorn School Rule 3. But this was trending to Dave's knee, this was trending to Dave's knee. But she was looking, she was looking after him. She reached into her bag for the treat she brought with Mum earlier. But the shopping bag was full of donuts, not carrots. Myra realised she must have picked up her Mum's bag by mistake. Now Dave didn't have any treats, and Mum had taken a bag of carrots to work with her. 
Myra could feel her eyes welling up with tears as she dropped the donuts on the floor. Nothing was going right today. But something extraordinary was happening today. His nostrils flared and his mouth twitched. With a happy little whinny, he gobbled up a donut, then another. Before Myra could stop him, he had eaten all and the bag. He'd eaten them all and the bag. Suddenly Dave was like a different unicorn. His eyes shone and his mane even looked squishy. He let Myra stroke his soft muzzle and then he stamped a hoof in joy. Myra grabbed a brush and started combing it through his mane. She looked around the room fizzing with pride. She hoped everyone would see how happy Dave suddenly was. He was showing his teeth in a sort of weird grin. He must really like donuts, she thought. Maybe she would win a medal for best at cheering up unicorns. Then it all went wrong. Dave reared up on his hind legs and let out a loud and gleeful neigh. He shot forward, knocking over a chair. A few children and unicorns towards them, startled, and Miss Glitterhorn looked up from her desk. Then, full of sugary, donutty joy, Dave galloped around the classroom, scattering the pupils and their unicorns and destroying the matchstick fairy tale castle that Grace Hobbs had brought in as a present for her unicorn and had taken literally weeks to make. Finally, he skidded into Jake's desk and crushed his pencil case. Jake looked furious. After Miss Glitterhorn had wrangled Dave into the naughty stool, she announced that since most pupils had successfully groomed their unicorns and class would now be creating pieces of art together, she suggested that Myra use the time to read the rule book, paying special attention to Unicorn School Rule 79, No Havoc Indoors. That's one havoc point already, I'm afraid. Three havoc points will result in detention, she said. Then that pupil and their unicorn will not be able to attend the first quest. Myra felt a panicky feeling in her stomach. She couldn't miss out on the first quest. She snuck a look at Dave over her shoulder and saw he was happily smoothing in the naughty stool. He looked very sweet, but he couldn't quite, but she couldn't quite ignore the thought. She kept pushing to the back of her mind. What if they don't have a totally magical bond? What if Dave wasn't going to be her unicorn best friend? Chapter 5. History Comes Alive After a good night's sleep in Red Dormitory, Myra woke up feeling full of hope for the day ahead. She picked Dave up from his stable and gave him a little pep talk on the way to class. At least, she w at least he was walking alongside her today. Myra felt that was progress. And I feel different being in school now, like a big unicorn. But we'll get through it together. I know we can be best friends. Dave gave Myra a sideways glance and then did a long rumbling fart. Charming! <laughs> the first lesson of the day was History of the Unicorn and their teacher, Mr. Trotsky, was giving a lecture on famous unicorns of the last thousand years. Myra lost concentration a couple of times. First, when another class rode their unicorns past the window, and then when Darcy passed round a note saying 
Would you rather have a unicorn that could breathe fire, or one that had electric hooves? And Mr. Trotsky did have a slow and droney voice. I hope you've been taking notes, class, Mr. Trotsky says, after talking for a very long time. We have another 500 years of unicorns to get through after our break, and then you will each prepare a presentation about famous unicorns from history to be performed at the end of the day. Let's make history come alive. <laughs> Sounds like Professor Binns from the Harry Potter books. <laughs> After break time, Dave trotted over to the grooming basket under their desk. With his front hoof, he knocked everything out of the basket, lay down in it and went to sleep. Myra looked round at the other unicorns who were sitting up nicely at their desk. Some were even helping to take notes. Seb's unicorn, Fireworks, seemed to be sketching with his horn. I'm sure Dave can do that too, when he's awake, thought Myra. She smiled and picked out different coloured pens to underline her notes. That cheered her up even more. Top 5 Best Unicorns from History Unicornado da Vinci Painter and Inventor <laughs> King Henry the Ninth, very fat unicorn who has six wives, winced horn Churchill, unicorn prime minister during the war. <laughs> Queen Unicorn, the most magnificent Celtic warrior, Celtic warrior queen unicorn. King Arthorn. And the unicorns of the round stable. <laughs> hey, hissed Jake from beside her. Don't you know unicorn school rule number 23? Myra shook her head. Jake rolled his eyes. Unicorns must be awake during lessons, he said. Pegasus widened his eyes as if to demonstrate what being awake was. Myra looked down at Dave who was snoring. She nudged him with her foot and Dave let out a giant fart. Freya's unicorn princess bolted out of the classroom in fright. Mr. Trotsky went to retrieve princess and Myra felt a tap on her shoulder. It was Freya. Sorry I scared your unicorn away, said Myra. Oh, don't worry, said Freya. She's scared of everything. It's nice to have a break. Well, at least your unicorn's awake, said Myra. She's too awake, <laughs> laughed Freya. Here, she said, handing Myra her sunglasses. Put these on him, and then Mr. Trotsky will never notice. They carefully put the sunglasses on Dave's head. Now you couldn't tell that he was asleep. Then, just to be sure... Freya got out her silver pen and drew eyes on the lenses. Mr. Trotsky returned with Princess. He glanced briefly at Dave before heading back to his desk. Myra breathed out in relief. They got away with it. When it was time to do their presentation, Dave was still asleep. Luckily, Darcy volunteered to go first. Darcy and her unicorn performed a rap. Darcy and Star, the best by far, and a complicated interpretive dance based on Darcy's favourite Disney film. Mr Trotsky said they did very well to keep going for such a long time. 
but he couldn't give them a mark because it had nothing to do with history. Eventually, it was time for Myra and Dave. Dave was still asleep and was now gnashing his teeth loudly. Myra thought he might be sleep-eating. With some help from Raheem and Freya, Myra dragged Dave's basket to the front. Old Mr. Trotsky peered at him suspiciously. I'm here to tell you the story of a unicorn that has now remained hidden in history, declared Myra. She pointed at Dave. The great... Davius the Third. He was really good friends with Cleopatra and Jesus. Myra looked over at Mr. Trotsky, who was frowning. One day, the great Davius the Third really annoyed a witch, and she turned him into stone. And she turned him to stone. The class gasped. Myra pointed at Dave again. He was frozen. He could not do anything except stare with his beautiful silver eyes. He was a statue for a hundred years. What happened then? Piped up Flo, Freya's twin sister from the front row. Um, said Myra. The class looked expectantly at Dave, who did nothing. And then he died. The end, said Myra. There was silence. Flo started clapping, but then she stopped. Myra took a bow but as she swept down, she knocked the sunglasses. Yeah, she knocked the sunglasses, and they tumbled off Dave's head onto the floor. His eyes fell off, shrieked Flo, and she fainted. Your unicorn is asleep, bellowed Mr. Trotsky, as Flo's unicorn sparkles prodded her with a hoof. That, said Mr. Trotsky, is a havoc point. Chapter 6. Perfect Prancing. Maybe Dave's just tired after the lesson, said Raheem at lunch as they ate their rainbow pie. Rainbow pie had seven different coloured vegetables in it. Myra didn't think that was very magical. They all looked at Dave after finishing his lunch in about three seconds. He'd gone back to sleep. Maybe he just doesn't like you, said Darcy. What? Myra spat out her rainbow pie. Darcy shrugged. Just saying, he's getting you in trouble a lot. We can swap if you like, said Freya. She hadn't been able to eat yet as Princess was hugging her so hard she couldn't move her arms. Raheem looked up. He was having a unicorn free lunch as Brave had gone outside to charge around and leap over jumps. You can't swap your unicorn, said Darcy shocked. Myra felt a bit sad. She didn't really feel she'd bonded with Dave yet, mostly because he'd been asleep, grumpy or naughty. But he was who he was. And he was her unicorn. Myra shook her head firmly. No, she said. Dave does like me. He'll get the hang of school soon. He better hurry up, chimed in a voice. They looked up to see Jake studying, uh, standing by their table, looking smug. If you want to go on the quest, that is, you already have two havoc points, and if you get three, then that's detention, and you have to stay here while we all go questing. I wouldn't mind getting detention and staying here, muttered Raheem, as Jake and Pegasus strode away. Myra crossed her arms. There was no way she was getting another havoc point and missing the quest. Myra and Dave managed to keep out of trouble for the rest of the day. 
and the next morning it was time for their first riding lesson. Miss Glitterhorn had said that the best rider would be given the honour of leading the quest. Jake told them all that he'd been having riding lessons since he was a baby, so he was 100% sure he was going to be quest leader. Myra knew she wouldn't be the best, but she didn't mind about being particularly good at riding, just as long as she and Dave made it onto the quest. Class Red filed into the meadow at the front of the school. It was being decorated for the first quest party. Glittery bunting hung from trees and hedges. Class Green were blowing up balloons and Class Indigo were helping Miss Ponytail, the art teacher, set up a giant knitted scene of the great quest of 1488. That was when Unicornado da Vinci invented a horned helicopter and flew it over the Diamond Lake. <laughs> the first quest was a big deal at Unicorn School. When Class Red had completed their quest, the entire school would come out to celebrate with them. What do you think the quest will be? Flo was hopping from foot to foot with excitement. She was wearing a new homemade horn that seemed to have quite a few. And she seemed to have quite a few. I reckon we'll have to climb a mountain and probably fight a witch, said Darcy, pointing at the glittery ice cap mountains that loomed behind the forest. Raheem looked alarmed, Jake smirked. My dad said the first quest is always super dangerous and not everyone makes it back. Only the best unicorns and their riders. Raheem had to go and have a sit down. Miss Glitterhorn rounded up Class Red by clapping her hands. It's time for your riding lesson, Class. Please escort your unicorns to the stables to glitter shoe their hooves. Miss, Miss. Darcy waved her hand in the air. What are glitter shoes? Don't you know anything? Jake scoffed. They're not glitter shoes. It's glitter shoe. Unicorns need glitter to protect their hooves. Before they can be ridden. That's a glitter shoe box outside every stall. No. There's a glitter there's a glitter shoe box outside every stall. Thank you, Jake. Be nice to be be nice, please, said Miss Glitterhorn. Yes, glitter is very important for unicorns. It keeps their hooves safe and makes their horns sparkle. But the horn glitter is only for very special occasions. Now hurry up, everyone. Glitter shoe your friends. Once the unicorns had all glittered feet, all had glittered feet, and Darcy had glitter rimmed her wheels, they lined up in the paddock. Miss Glitterhorn showed them how to mount a unicorn using a mounting block. Darcy had a whizzy harness, which helped her out of her chair and on to star. Raheem thought it looked much safer that looked a much safer way to get on bra to get on brave, but Miss Glitterhorn wouldn't let him. Dave stood very calmly next to the mountain block while Myra put her hat on. There was a that was a good start, she thought. But then she tried getting on to on to him, and Dave kicked up his back legs and tipped her into a bush. Myra picked a clump of leaves out of her hair. She stroked Dave's muzzle and gently placed both hands on his back and climbed onto nothing as Dave trotted to the other side of the fence. Myra landed with a thump on the grass. This was not fair. No, this was not fair. 
The others were happily mounting and dismounting their unicorns and practicing going from a walk to a trot around the edges of the paddock. Myra could feel tears pricking at her eyes. Maybe... No, sorry. Why didn't Dave let her ride? Why wouldn't he behave properly? Why was he making unicorn school so difficult? All Myra had ever wanted was to come here and make a unicorn best friend and earn loads of medals so she could put them on her shelf at home. Was that too much to ask? Myra, Myra was really crying now. She put her hands over her face so that no one could see. She felt a nudge at her back. Looking over her shoulder, she saw Dave. Myra sniffed. Leave me alone, Dave. But Dave ducked down and, with a flick of his nose, tipped Myra up onto his back. Then he trotted over to the rest of the class and joined the back of the line as the unicorns took turns weaving in and out of the sparkly cones set all around the field. Myra sniffed loudly and wiped her nose on her sleeve on the sleeve of her T-shirt. Then she leant down to give Dave a hug. Thank you, she whispered. Dave flicked his ears in response. Over the next couple of hours, they practiced walking, trotting and cantering and communicating with their unicorns, using their voice and their body. Dave didn't put a hoof wrong and Myra couldn't stop grinning. Then it was time to learn the unicorn and rider's most important skill, prancing. The unicorns had to kick their feet up high and bounce along. It was a bit like trotting and quite bumpy. Miss Glitterhorn shouted words of encouragement. Very good, Jake, but straighten your back. Not so bouncy, Flo. Raheem, just get back on your unicorn. Excellent. Who's that? Myra? Myra? Oh, gosh. Well, excellent. Well done. Lovely prancing. Myra was so surprised at getting praise from Miss Glitterhorn that she nearly fell off Dave. Darcy grinned and held up her hand for a high, high, for a high five when Myra got back in. When Myra got back to the line. You guys are totally going to get the best prancing, the best, uh, uh, get a best uh, prancing medal. Myra couldn't quite believe it. For the first time, lessons were going well at unicorn school. She stroked Dave's scratchy mane between his ears. He gave a proud fart. Miss Glitterhorn clapped to get their attention again. I'm delighted to say that for the loveliest prancing I've seen in a long time, our leaders for the first quest will be Myra and Dave. Myra thought she might actually burst with pride. But, Jake blurted out. Yes, Jake, said Miss Glitterhorn, looking surprised. But my dad was quest leader on all the quests he ever did. He, Jake's voice wavered and he looked down and twiddled his fingers. Myra thought he might be crying. Oh, Jake, said Miss Glitterhorn, there will be plenty of chances to be the leader. Now, one more prance around the paddock, then it's dinner time. The unicorns got into line, but Jake was still looking down and fiddling with something in his pocket. Myra nudged Dave with her foot, and they rode on, and they rode over to Jake and Pegasus. Are you okay? said Myra. And then she stopped. Is that a donut? Why do you have... With a sly grin, Jake threw the donut across the paddock. Dave bolted after the snack, which nailed over, to the, fe which nailed over the fence. Myra clung desperately onto Dave's mane. Everything around her was a blur. Dave soared over the fence and thudded down on the other side. Myra could see people and unicorns scattering and objects flying in all directions. Something was ahead of them. 
a colourful glittering rectangular shape stretched across their path. Then suddenly they skidded to a halt. Myra lurched forwards but she clung on. She saw the donut lying on the ground just in front of them. Phew! She panted, sitting up straight. Then Dave gave a buck and Myra was tipped out of the saddle. She went straight through the glittery sharp and landed shape and landed with a bump on the grass. She could hear voices saying strange things like, The mural! And I spent five years knitting that! That Myra de Say. That, Myra de Say, is a habit point, said a very cross Miss Glitterhorn. Myra sat up dizzily, dizzily. But wait, no, three habit points means... Miss Glitterhorn frowned. No quest for you. Chapter 7 An Unexpected Quest Myra sat in the classroom, looking at her drawing of Princess Delilah Sparklehoof. Everyone else had gone to the first quest farewell ceremony. She could hear them all cheering outside. Myra didn't want to go to the ceremony. She knew she'd feel even worse watching the rest of the class going off on their quest, and seeing how excited they all were. Jake had denied all knowledge of the donut and was made quest leader. The mural that Myra had sailed straight through, making a big hole, was currently being repaired by Class Yellow. Myra sighed and put the Princess Delilah Sparklehoof picture in her bag. Then she set off for the PE office where she'd been told to go for her detention. As she walked down the corridor, she heard a snort and turned to see Dave trotting beside her. He nosed around in her bag. I don't have any snacks, Dave, said Myra. Dave pulled out the Princess Delilah Sparklehood picture. No, don't eat that. Myra snatched the picture back and smoothed it down. Princess Delilah Sparklehoof would have got me in trouble. That wouldn't have got me in trouble, she said quietly. Dave looked at Myra and blinked. Then he carried on, trotting down the corridor. When they reached the office, a fierce-looking PE teacher called Miss Hind was sitting behind a desk. But she wasn't the only person in the room. Darcy? exclaimed Myra. What are you doing here? Shouldn't you be on the quest? Tell me about it, cried Darcy. It's an absolute outrage. I've been making a vital contribution in every lesson. Star snorted in support. Yes, said Miss Hind, but you haven't done any of your work. Just then, in walked Raheem and Brave. What are you doing here? said Myra and Darcy together. I'm in detention, he said. Darcy frowned. Really? What did you do? I put a unicorn poo in Miss Glitterhorn's bag and got three havoc points at once, he replied, his eyes wide, almost as though he couldn't believe it himself. What? said Darcy. Unicorn poos were very small and neat and glittery, but they were still poos. The teacher grunted from her desk and gestured for them to be quiet. Why would you put... Why would you get put in detention on purpose? Myra whispered as Raheem sat down. I thought you might like some company. Raheem grinned. 
Myra wondered if it was more about not having to go on the quest, but she didn't say that. Bray seemed quite cross with Raheem and was refusing to look at him. Did you hear what the task was? said Darcy. No, said Myra glumly. It's glitter picking, Darcy replied. It sounds absolutely rubbish. I'm glad we're not going. I'd happily glue I'd happily go glitter picking, thought Myra, as the teacher told them to stop talking again. Miss Hind led them out into the stables. She pointed to a pile of dustpans and brushes and a poo shovel and told them that their detention task was mucking out all the unicorn stables. Then she turned and headed into the PE office. They heard her turn on the TV. What? said Raheem, horrified. I thought we'd be writing lines or tidy in the stationery cupboard. More poo for you, Raheem, giggled Darcy. Well, have fun. Me and Star have stuff to do. They scooted off to the other side of the stables, where they appeared to be looking at photos on Darcy's phone. Myra wondered if you could get medals in detention. She hadn't imagined her first medal would be best at picking up poo. But at least it would be a medal. Yeah, a, a rubbish medal. Come on, she said. We have a lot of poo to get through. It wasn't so bad at first. The neat little unicorn. Poos were quite easy to pick up. But Dave's poos, of course, were different. They were sloppy and messy. And giant. Every time they cleared a stable, he would add a new poo to the top of the straw, like it was a fun game. Myra paused for a moment and stared out towards the forest. She wondered if Class Red, now what Class Red were doing now. Then she saw a bolt of glittery light shoot up from the trees and into the sky. Guys! she shouted. Quick! What? said Raheem nervously. Darcy wheeled over. Hey, how's it going? Oh, Raheem, you missed a bit. They set off a flare, said Myra. I read about... I read about flares in the handbook. She tried hard to remember what it said, and what it had said. She had been distracted by photos of the unicorns. Then she remembered something Rani had told her. Oh, it could be a distress flare. It's a signal that means they're in danger. Raheem's eyes went wide, but Darcy looked unsure. They're glitter picking, she said. The worst that could happen is someone could get trapped in a bin bag. Actually... They collect glitter in special boxes, said Raheem, and it's really valuable. And they said at the farewell ceremony that they need to collect loads to fill the great horn at the quest party, and they collect it at the Glitter Glade, which is an amazingly special place. So glitter picking is a really important cue. Ow! <laughs> Darcy elbowed him and looked pointedly at Myra. It's a silly quest and we are not missing out. Myra looked out one more time but the forest was still unsilent. She sighed. Yeah, she sighed. The glitter glade sounded completely magical. She wished she was there now. A few minutes later, something made them all stop. A long, low howl rang out from the forest. 
How? It got louder and louder. And then was accompanied by other sounds. Screeches and rumbles. They all looked at each other. The dangers of the forest, whispered. Raheem fearfully. What? frowned Myra. I read a book before I came here about all the potential dangers that lurk within the fearsome forest, Raheem said. There were 97, and lots of them can be identified by their sound. That could have been a bear or a werewolf or an earthquake, an avalanche. More howling and moaning rang out from the forest. A lamb whale? suggested Darcy. Should we go and get Miss Hind? said Myra. She felt weirdly excited. Obviously she didn't want Class Red to be in danger, but if they were if they would need rescuing No, but if they were they would need rescuing. She might think we're being silly, said Raheem. Miss Hine did think they were being silly. She said the forest made all sorts of noises that they probably imagined a flare. And that they probably imagined a flare, yeah. And she was very cross that they'd interrupted her during a crucial moment in champion, in champion, woof, woof, WWUWF. Worldwide Unicorn Wrestling Federation. I'm sure something's wrong, said Myra, as they walked back out into the yard. What if they are in danger, and we don't do anything at all? We can't just stay here and do nothing. She paused for a moment and stared at Dave, and then back at the forest. Team? I think it's time for a rescue quest. Chapter 8 The Fearsome Forest Darcy was very much up for the adventure and Raheem reluctantly agreed that they should make sure that everything was okay as long as he could take some essential items with him on the trip. The items that Raheem considered essential were Dangers of the Forest Book First Aid Kit Torch Sun Cream Antibacterial Hand Gel Two Changes of Clothes Waterproof Coat and Trousers High-Vis Jacket Knee Pad Notebook Special Rock Collection Lucky Teddy Three pack lunches and an extra pair of emergency socks. Brave was stamping his foot at the entrance to the stable yard, impatient for them to get going. He had stopped ignoring Raheem now that they were going on a quest, and he was only a bit annoyed when he realised how heavy Raheem's rucksack, ru rucksack was. Right! shouted Mira. We are going on, we are going on a quest! And we are going to rescue our class, and we are going to get a medal for it. And we are going to have the time of our lives! Myra rustled some sweets until Dave woke up, and then she jumped on his back. Okay, people, said Darcy. It's showtime. Which way are we going? Myra blinked hard and held out the map of the school grounds. Dave turned around and sniffed at it. Class Red, we're heading into we're heading to the Glitter Glade. So we we take that path and follow it into the forest. And then, just as the path split, split, we, 
day they the man Munch. Raheem sighed. Well, now we don't have the map, we'd better stay here. We don't need maps, said Darcy. We'll follow our hearts, or just pick a random path and go for it. Star set off on the bridal way out of the school grounds. Raheem squealed as Graves galloped after them. Myra and Dave, a pat on the neck. Now Myra gave Dave a pat on the neck. He did one last poo, and then they set off after their friends. Everything seemed so much more bright and shiny to Myra as they rode to the edge of the paddock. This is a quest, an actual quest. The entrance to the forest was shrouded in sparky cobwebs and they began to pick their way carefully through them. Brave stop! called Raheem, still outside the forest. Myra gave De Myra turned Dave around. It's okay, Raheem, she said. It's not that dark and terrifying in there, I promise. I took a while, it, it took a while, but Raheem and Brave finally came trotting through. It really was Brave, not me, said Raheem crossly. He wouldn't move. <laughs> well, how ironic, isn't it? A unicorn named Brave? Scared of the forest? <laughs> What a wimp. As they made their way through the forest, there was less bird song, and they could only just glimpse the sky through the thick branches up above them. Even though it was a bit spooky, Myra couldn't help but feel happy. She was on an actual quest, sort of and Dave had been awake for ages. <laughs> I wish we didn't have to trek through this terrifying forest, muttered Raheem. He was struggling to stay on Brave, who kept backing away from cobwebs and snorting wildly. I know what will distract us, I know what will distract us, said Darcy, moving Star away from Brave, who was shaking his mane. Let's sing the school song. She began to sing loudly and somewhat tunelessly. We love our unicorns, yes we do. We keep them safe and glitter their shoes. Brave suddenly gave a strange high-pitched whinny and Raheem pointed at the path ahead of them. It was blocked by three huge tree trunks. Oh no, said Myra. I'm sure we're getting close to class red now. She jumped off Dave and climbed up one of the tree trunks, brushing away more of the sparkly cobwebs. Yes, the path walks just up ahead, and the glitter glade should be down the hill on the left. Let's jump it, said Darcy, backing Star up to take a, to take a run up. Brave started shaking. I think he's trying to tell us something, said Raheem. He probably wants to go first, said Myra. Brave by name, brave by nature. At that, Brave knelt down on the path and put his hooves over his eyes. Raheem looked down at his unicorn and then up at the tree trunk. Maybe he's scared of heights. Brave snorted indignantly and shook his head. Look, Brave, me and Star will go first, said Darcy. You'll be fine. Star cantered up to the logs and jumped clean over them. Darcy let out a happy whoop on the other side. Myra hopped back onto Dave and pointed him towards the trunks. 
What do you think, Dave? Dave ran straight up the trunks and then scrambled through a gap at the bottom of the trees, scaring away spiders and cobwebs. With Myra clinging on to his back, he was a it was a clever way to get through. Myra had to admit, even though she'd swallowed a cobweb or two. Ugh. Moments later, Raheem and Brave came soaring over the trunk. It was the spiders," said Raheem. As soon as they scared them, as soon as they scared them away, Brave was fine. The unicorns and the children all high-fived each other, though Brave still looked a bit shaky. It's okay, boys. Raheem patted his unicorn's neck. Spiders are harmless, really. We got through it together. Come on, Team Rescue Quest, called Myra. She was still buzzing from getting past the tree trunks. Nothing was going to stop them. <coughs> well, until the unicorn's hoof slipped, and the friends found themselves tumbling down a steep, muddy, leaf-covered hill. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. Chapter 9 To the rescue! Myra opened her eyes, rubbing her sore head. She was at the bottom of a pile of Raheem, Darcy and their three unicorns, at the foot of the steep slope. Then a big shape loomed over them. It said, You are supposed to be in detention! Miss Glitterhorn, said Myra, We found you. We're here to rescue you. Their teacher helped Myra and the others up. Myra could see that they were in the glitter glade. It was a beautiful, grassy clearing in the trees, with streams and glitter running down from the hills around. Everything sparkled. The unicorns were holding ornate looking boxes in their teeth, which the pupils were filling with glitter from the sparkly piles on the glade floor. But Myra realized no one seemed to be in any trouble. Everyone in class red looked. Well, fine. They were all staring at Myra and her friends. Mid glitter scoop. Uh, we don't need rescuing, said Jake, pulling a face at them. But you sent up a glitter flare to ask for help. Myra suddenly... was suddenly sure of herself. Oh, what? Miss Glitterhorn crossed her arms. Myra, that was a glitter cannon to celebrate the start of the quest. But we heard a moaning and wailing sound. We thought something terrible was after you. Darcy was pulling leaves out of her hair from the pool. Freya stepped forward and rolled her eyes. That was lunchtime. The unicorns wanted to sing karaoke. That's enough, Rhea. You know unicorns love to sing. Miss Glitterhorn sighed. As if on cue, firework and sparkles burst out into a howl and then Princess joined in with several blood-curdling screams. Myra winced. It sounded like the time she had accidentally sat on pickles. Miss Glitterhorn stared at Myra and her friends crossly. You are all in big trouble. We will deal with this when we get back to the school. Myra's heart was thumping. Could you get expelled from unicorn school? Freya appeared at Myra's side. Don't worry. The quest hasn't been that fun. You didn't miss much. They looked over at Freya's sister Flo, who was rolling around in glitter with sparkles and... 
laughing with joy. Seven his unicorn ran past with an armful of glitter shouting, This is so much fun! Well, it's a little bit fun, admitted Freya. But Jake's in a massive mood because Miss Glitterhorn said we couldn't collect the rainbow glitter from the edge of the mythical danger cliff. It's too dangerous for first years. You have to be class green or above. Very sensible, said Raheem. Just then, the glade darkened as clouds appeared in the sky. Miss Glitterhorn clapped her hands and told the rest of the class to hurry up. Almost time to return to school, children. Remember, we must collect enough glitter to fill the great horn so the unicorns can glitter their horns at the party. And there is an extra medal for whoever collects the most glitter. And then the rain started. It was the southernest, heaviest rain shower Myra had ever seen. The children were all soaked through within seconds. Daffy and Star and Raheem and Brave sped over to the nearest tree to shelter. Myra was about to follow when she heard a noise. She stopped, straining to listen over the rain. It sounded like someone calling for help. Myra knew her teacher wouldn't believe her. Not after the rescue quest turned out to be, well, neither a rescue nor a quest. And Miss Glitterhorn was busy gathering the class and the glitter together. Myra looked over at her friends sheltering under the tree. She couldn't risk getting them into even more trouble. But what if she was right this time? She looked around to check no one was watching at her, gave Dave a nudge, and they both crept off down the path in the direction of the sound. The path under their feet became more rocky. Then they saw a sign that said, Mystical Danger Cliff up ahead. Then another one that said, Class Green and Above, only part... Um, Class green and, and above only past this point. Myra and Dave looked at each other. Shall we do it? Said Myra. Dave trotted over to the sign and kicked it into a bush. And then looked back at Myra. Well, that was one way of dealing with it. And then they saw it. An enormous cliff face. Covered in rainbow glitter. A narrow rocky path led across the side of the cliff to the edge, which jutted and out over a ravine. There had been some sort of landslide and the path was blocked by a huge mound of glitter. Standing against the cliff edge on the other side of the mound were Jake and Pegasus. Jake! Jake! Myra? Jake took a step along the narrow path towards her. A few glittery rocks crumbled off into the ravine below. Stop! yelled Myra. Wait there. I'll go and get Miss Glitterhorn. No! Jake backed up against the cliff. I... I don't want to get into trouble. Myra hesitated. Jake and Pegasus really were in danger on the cliff path but she didn't want to get him into trouble with Miss Glitterhorn, and Myra was in enough trouble herself already. She made up her mind. Jake, we have to get back to school safely. Just stay there and I'll go to help. But Dave wouldn't budge. He started, he started eating the bottom of the rainbow glitter avalanche. Myra didn't even know the glitter was edible but that had never stopped Dave before. Myra nudged Dave with her knees. Dave, come on. We've got to get Miss Glitterhorn. Dave started chomping even more greedily. He was crushing pebbles in his teeth as he gobbled the glitter down. 
His bottom was wiggling as he moved forward, and he was making happy snorting noises. Dave and Myra were practically tunneling into the other line. I'm worried. We're just... Dave's just... Eek! Dave took one last huge bite of glitter and backed away. Myra gasped. There was now a clear path to Jake and Pegasus. He's just rescuing you. Myra stroked Dave's ears and Dave gave a happy burp. The rain stopped as suddenly as it had started. Jake and Pegasus tiptoed down the cliff path. Are you okay? asked Myra as Jake stepped off the dangerous path. Yes, I'm fine. Jake still looked pretty pale and shaken. Why did you come to pick more glitter than the class were going to pick? Jake shrugged and looked down at his feet. Some of us are parents who actually expect them to be able to be the best and not to mess absolutely everything up. Myra didn't know what to say to that, so they... trotted back up the path in silence, except for Dave's sparky burp. Myra and Jake caught up with their class on the other side of the tree trunk. Where on earth have you been? asked Miss Glitterhorn, as she was counting the pupils. Myra looked at Jake, who had an expression of panic on his face. Dave and Pegasus both needed really big poos, said Myra. Right, thank you for the detail, Myra. Now let's get back to school. Once they'd made it through the forest and back to school, everyone hurried into the stables to dry themselves and their unicorns off. The unicorns settled into their stables for a nap and snack. Myra, Rahim and Darcy were told to write out, I must not escape the tension 100 times each before the quest party. The rest of class read all went back to change into dry clothes. Myra could hear Jake boasting about how much glitter he collected as they made their way inside. She passed him in the corridor, and Jake stopped talking and blushed. What was that about? asked Darcy. Oh, I don't know, said Myra. Come on, let's get ready for the party. Chapter 10. Party time. Myra was upset that she wouldn't be getting a medal in her very first quest ceremony, but she couldn't be too sad when the preparations were so much fun. The unicorns needed to be groomed and glitter hoofed, and the pupils had to put their rainbow party t-shirts on. That afternoon, Glass Red filed out onto the paddock with their unicorns. The entire school was waiting and cheering for them. The knitted mural of the gear quest of 1488 was back up and there was sparkly hunting everywhere. Bunting everywhere. Class Red all sat down in a row at the front. The school staff were sitting on a platform and there was something really tall and big hidden under a golden curtain. Madame Shetland got up on the sparkly mountain block and clapped for silence. It is a very special day. Class Red have been on their first quest. The whole school cheered. They did a lot of glitter picking and successfully filled the great horn. Madame Shetland noticed to Colin the care nodded to Colin the caretaker, who pulled the golden curtain away to reveal a giant glittery curved upside down unicorn horn. Everyone gasped. And I am thrilled to announce that the very special extra medal for most glitter collected on Class Red's first quest goes to that goes to flow. 
she picked 17 boxes of glitter and brought back another two boxes worth in her ha- worth in her hair and on her clothes such dedication to glitter picking said madame shetland the entire school burst into applause glow skipped up onto the stage up to the stage to collect her medal leaving a trail of glittery footprints on the way madame shetland clapped her hands again marvelous class red you may now come up to receive your medals for completing the first quest class red all got up to collect their medals from the stage freya tamsin and seb all whooped as they were presented with theirs jake even J- jake even did a bow myra raheem and darcy stayed in the audience feeling a bit gloomy when madame shetland gestured to them to come and collect their medals miss glitterhorn spoke loudly so that everyone could hear madame shetland these three pupils left attention without permission to join the quest therefore they will not be receiving any medals madame shetland frowned that is very unfortunate but the school rules are clear number eleven no quest no medal no no quest no medal said myra sadly just then someone coughed from the stage myra looked around to see where the cough had come from then to her surprise jake started speaking miss he said softly at first they did escape detention all right jake don't rub it in darcy shout all right jake don't rub it in darcy shouted at him they did escape jake repeated speaking louder now but it was only because they were worried about us and actually myra saved me on the way back i'd got lost they they should get medals too maybe just small ones jake's cheeks were red and he was frowning and looking very uncomfortable madame shetland thought for a moment this is very noble but they did not complete the quest and they did leave the tension without permission that is very naughty Darcy squeezed Myra's hand. However, said Madame Shetland, their behaviour ultimately enabled them to help a fellow pupil. So, Myra, Rahim and Darcy, will you please come up to the stage to receive your medals for being cautious and concerned for one's fellow students? The whole school started clapping and cheering. Myra even thought she could hear Rani yelling her name in the crowd. They gave each other high fives as they got off the stage. Medals for being cautious, eh? Your dad will be so proud, Raheem, Darcy, said Darcy. He really will, Raheem beamed. I'm sorry I got us into more trouble, said Myra. But I had the best time with you guys. Friendship really is the best kind of magic. And I really got, and I finally got a medal. Myra thought as she stroked it happily. The party was amazing. There were cupcakes and balloons and glitter everywhere. There were dodgems, a bouncy castle, a coconut shy, and a long queue for the glitter horn. This was the highlight of the party for the unicorns because it made their horns super sparkly which is what makes unicorns happiest. Each pupil and their unicorn stood under the upside down horn and when they were ready Miss Hind pulled a rope and the horn released a shower of glitter onto the pair. Speaking of the unicorns, Myra hadn't seen Dave since the medal ceremony. She started looking for him in the crowd. Then there was a snort behind her. Dave! There you are! Oh! Myra stopped, shocked. Dave was wearing a chewed up, the chewed up crown she had made for him. She put glitter in his mane 
and was wearing what looked like gold mascara. He was carrying a pitcher in his mouth. He dressed up as Princess Delilah Sparklehood. He put it Myra felt like she might cry with happiness. Then she laughed and gave Dave a massive hug. Oh, Dave. Did you stick up the crown and everything? He nodded. Myra gave him a kiss. Thank you. Myra led Dave to the cupcake table and held out a, the punch bowl for him to slurp. She looked around. She saw her new friends and their unicorns. She saw their quest medals and then looked at her own special medal. Nothing was quite as she'd expected at unicorn school, so she wouldn't change a single thing. Dave did a big poo next to the treats table. Well, she might change one or two little things. Myra quickly dragged Dave away before anyone noticed. Come on, Dave. You need some more glitter. Myra led him over to the glitter horn for their photo. You're not what I expected, Dave. She said, but you're one special unicorn. As glitter rained down on them, Myra realised she had had the best time and she couldn't wait to have more amazing adventures with Dave, the naughtiest unicorn. Oh, okay. So the next book I read for this series will indeed be The Naughtiest Unicorn at Sports Day. And that will begin after the Christmas holidays. Until then, Thanks for watching.